I, I, I want people to know the truth about him. And if you feel like you want to record, by all means, if you want to share my story, go for it. I think people should know the truth about him, the whole truth. Yeah, much better. Um, it's, it's quite interesting because when I, when I left, my life did a 360. It completely turned around, which is good. Um, um, you know, the only consolation that I have for being in the situation that I was is, you know, I, I didn't know any better. And looking back, I was like, man, I could have just really kicked myself. It, it was, um, I, I do believe in a brainwashed. Um, I believe in coercion. I, I experienced all of that. And um, it was a malignant optimism that, that kept me there. Yeah. That, you know what, it, is it going to get better? And then the fear started coming on because of the, the so <clears throat> in order to, to dive into this, it, it's like layers and chapters, and it's, all, it's hard to put it all in just to one hour, but I'll give you, yeah. um, but what I'm about to tell you is going to, it's going to change what what you may think of, uh, of Russ and how, uh, how you view him. It's, it's going to change everything. Unless you already know, unless you already have um, a good idea what he's all about. Um, in, in his, he, he has very acute paranoia. You're absolutely right. He, um, he, he was very uh, protective over me, very controlling, very protective. And he, but he knew what he was doing to me and he, he, hands off. He didn't want anybody to uh, either get to me. I don't know. It was it was the most bizarre thing that I've ever experienced in my life. It was um, it was just, it was insidious. Yes, it, it was a front. Him taking me to getting tacos. House. All of it was a front. When the camera goes off, um, uh, I saw the real the real Russ. Carol, she, um, if you, if you go back and look at the movie, uh, Haunters, they are, are the scare. No, no. In comparison, uh, Russ is this happy, crazed uncle. Carol looks like she's been through hell and back. Something's not right. And so the BJ oh. people that, that they are predators, but um, I didn't know how bad it was until when it, it, it was true because it happened slowly, little by little. And then when he got me, and he lured me in over to Tennessee. The same thing happened in San Diego. It was isolation. Um, that's when he could uh, really unleash all of this mental stuff that he wanted to on a person because I don't know um, what his justifications were. Um, if he was hurt, he wanted to justify himself that he's hurt. I'm going to hurt people. What, what he did and what he's all about is what I really – uh, want people to know um, he has another poor soul with him and she's so lost and I, I was once like that and I, I feel really bad for her because she has no idea what he's like and that it was it was like he got another me and he's like oh good I'm going to use this poor woman and just do the same stuff I did to Holly the same stuff I did to Carol because that's what he does um I can't really speak out because, of course, like um, all psychopathic narcissists do, they'll he'll throw out his flying monkeys and discredit me. So I stay back, and I know one day the truth will be known of what he is, and he'll be all the way. I hope the miserable bastard gets locked up. He called the Tennessee State Hospital, and my mom's a registered nurse, and my dad's a pharmacist. And she vouched for me, saying, my daughter does not have schizophrenia. She does no mental abuse. She's being abused by Russ McCamey. Get her out of there. I want her home. Everything that you saw me on the camera do, he made me do it. The only time that I, I did it on my free will was when I was back in San Antonio, and I was doing the my, my own little uh, free videos just to have fun. But, yeah, yeah. yes, me calling contestants, me, yeah, that was... Him, I would never want to do it on my own will, but he, 
he got his claws so onto my brain. It was, it was brain control. control. It was mind control. That's the only way I, I could think. Oh, it was all of the above. All of the above. But, you know, that's not even the worst. And that's what I'm going to say. What I'm about to share to you, it, it's going to turn your stomach. That's not even the physical, the mental. No, no, that, that doesn't even hit the iceberg. No, that was, I would be lucky if that was it. I would be so lucky. Um, that's what I'm telling this man. It's very dangerous. And I told the police everything. And there's one police officer that believes me. And that's why they're not going to get him out of his sight. Um, what Russ McKamey is... <clears throat> When I was at the, when I was doing the haunt with him, he would tell me his sick, like, I guess, to him, they, they, they were, there were images, but I think they were fantasies. They, he would tell me his sick fantasies that he has with kids, with children. He's a mm -hmm. passive pedophile. Now, when I say passive pedophile, meaning he would go to Walmart while I was there shopping, and he would just be looking at kids, looking at kids in, like, um, in dresses and skirts, girls, boys, teenagers. I mean, honest, yeah, he is. Now, this goes back to me back in the 90s of that domestic dispute back in um, San Diego. The reason his children don't like him, like his boy, his son, um, is probably he hurt his kid. He probably molested his kid. Um, it was weird because in San Diego, there were a box of pictures that he wanted me to help move. And he wanted me to clean off the pictures because he thought it was the pictures were dirty. And he, uh, I went through all these family photos he wanted me to wipe because his OCD um, was so extreme, but then I saw pictures of him. He took of his boy, and his boys were his boy was fully clothed, but it was weird. Like the child would just pose in like a very sexual manner, like show his bottom to the camera. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. And him was terrifying because uh, he was very threatened. He threatened me. Um, he he has a weapon, and he threatened violence against me, he threatened, he said that he saw himself shooting me with his gun, and I was like, oh, shit, I was like, I got to get out of here, that was back in Tennessee, but he he got in trouble for um, uh, probably molestation, it's very, it's, it's disgusting, and I told the police officer, listen, you need to watch this man, there are children in summer town, and you need to keep an eye on him because he goes after children. He looks at children in a sexual manner. He's a predator. And if you, that's why Russ is so crazy about protecting kids because deep down, I know his dirty secret. Yeah, he fantasizes about kids. And whatever woman is in his clutches, he's going to tell his dirty fantasies to. And he's going to say, it doesn't mean anything that I thought that I put my face down that little girl's crotch or shit like that. That would be tell me it, it was so insidious and disgusting. I mean, you wanted to claw out your ears, but he made me listen to that. Thing that I thought that I put my face down that little girl's crotch or shit like that. That yeah. would be tell me it, it was so insidious and disgusting. I mean, you wanted to claw out your ears, but he made me listen to that. The show. Yeah, that's been, I mean, I was stupid as hell. Um, not now in the ears. Yeah, that's I mean, I was stupid as hell. Um, not now anymore, but he liked that I was like bubbly, and that's just my personality. I, I am just a bubbly Aries. I, I like that, but it turned him on because um, it, it 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 excited him because it's like having a kid. You know, having his own kid. And I... um, but he wanted me to. I mean, I I love bodybuilding. I loved it before I met Russ, but I fit his fantasies that, oh, she's a bodybuilder, cool. So I won't think of her as a kid. I'll just think of her as a bodybuilder. He does like men. That Austin Graham, he has his fantasies about Austin. And I didn't know how to tell Austin. I wanted to tell his dad when we were at Trans World, but I didn't know how to, how do I, how do I even bring up that conversation without the dad 
wanting to kill him. And I was like, so what do I do with Austin? Austin, fortunately, he wised up. He's not involved with that shit anymore, thank God. But no. he, he, would, he, he, he would say stuff about Austin. He's like, oh, oh, he's, he's cute. I like when he wears uh, face paint. It made him look cute. Or, or he's like, oh, oh, he's like, I could see, uh, his muscles when he took off his shirt to change clothes like you were watching him and I mean, yeah. disgusting shit and um, i hope i don't want him to hurt a kid actually i i i i'm very sorry that he was hurt as a kid but like they said it's a vicious cycle not if if you're molested as a child then as an adult if you don't get healed from that trauma or um and if you choose to go ahead and and be an evil doer and hurt kids and yeah i mean it's I'm, I'm not justifying what he does, but he's um, he needs to get help. He needs to be locked away in a loony bin. He does because he's um, and now just gets to that point. The um, the woman that he has over there, I I feel for her because it's gonna be a time when when he's gonna unleash all holy all in holy hell on her like what he did to me and it, it's sad um so i hope she i hope she leaves when that time comes i hope um she doesn't get tormented so what i'm thinking is that um, he's so crazy that if he finds something really bad about you he wants nothing to do with it because he, okay the real authentic truth about russ is that he fantasizes about children and he likes to uh, hurt people and torment people. He um the way he uh, he gets off um uh when when Rocky died on his birthday. No. Um. So we were sleeping on the floor. Whatever. Um. And the dog was dying of cancer, and it was my birthday. Um. The very next day. Well, that night. Uh, I was sleeping next to the dog, um, sleeping bags, and um, he did something so creepy. I mean, it was creepy. Uh, He went and sang happy birthday to me while I was sleeping next to a dying dog. Um, But this was so sick. The very next day when when we had to put Rocky down, and, you know, he – you didn't have to put him down right away. You could – you could have just uh, kept him making him feel comfortable, but he knew that, well, since it's a birthday, I'm going to really make her remember a birthday. And so we took the dog to the vet and they said, look, we have to put him down because he's dying. And I understand to end the dog's suffering. Um, but when, uh, when they injected the, the dog, I think they injected with potassium. Um, what he did, he said, no, I was crying. I was in tears. You know, like I've never been next to a dog that was going to sleep. I didn't want to see that, but he's all, no, you're going to see this because I don't want Rocky to die alone. Because if you make, because if he goes alone, then that just shows the guilt. The his favorite weapon of modality is guilt. So he made me, um, told me to pick up Rocky's face while the dog was dying after he just got injected. And he started taking pictures of me holding the dying dog. When I was bawling, I was crying, and he was just filming and taking pictures. And his damn crocodile tears, whatever. I don't believe when he cries. And so he was just taking pictures of the emotion. Like, he was trying to capture that energy and just, he feeds off of negative emotion. He feeds off of energy. And he, um, he loves the energy of children. He loves that. And he's such a sick fuck. Like, oh, my God, he is so effing sick. And I, I pray for the day that he's hauled away in a loony bin. I pray for that day. I, he's so, he would do the same with Carol. He would make Carol hold the dying dog and take pictures because he liked that emotion. And he's such a fucking sick Hollywood wannabe director, pedophiliac Jack, jackal. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, I was so brainwashed. I mean, I, I feel like a new woman. I'm like, oh, my God. I, two years ago, I if I were to go see my old stuff, I would have shook myself and say, get the hell out of here. Run. Get out of here. You know, don't you know he's sucking your life away? He's sucking your life force. That's, that's like three years I can't get back. But yeah, I'm, I'm building myself up. But 
I feel like a new person because I'm finally telling telling the truth. I'm, I needed to tell someone the truth about Russ. And um, that that day when the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, just running, running while she ran away from the house. And um, when I ran, because I knew he had guns, <clears throat> excuse me, he had weapons in the house and he would threaten me. So I called the cops and I'm like, listen, this guy's trying to, he, he's hurt. He's trying to kill me. He threatened me with a gun. I need you to come and find me. And, and then I saw him pull out with his truck to try to find me. And I was like, shit, that's when I, because I had the vantage point. I could see his hat. I wish I didn't hide in the field because the cops were on their way and they brought two cops because they knew it was going to be a showdown. They had two. One was a black car. It was a, a special detective. So they were on him. They're like, that's it. The shit hits the fan. It's going to be a shootout. They're like, okay. It's, they, they were heavily armed. They were ready. It, it was going to be a brawl. So I wish that I would have just kept on running and argued out and they could, and the cops would be there. Then they would have seen Russ and I would say, Hey, help me. He's crazy. He's trying to kill me. And they would have hauled him out. But, um, but anyways, regardless, I'm glad I got out. Um, it was, that was, it was that nightmare that, changed my whole life to call the cops or if I then you know I might have still come back to help them out but um it, it took that blunt force to get me the hell out because my police friends in Texas were like we want her out of here uh they were building a case they were trying uh to pressure the DA to go forward with the true bill on him it was ready to go it was like a lunch was packed they were ready to go it was ready delivered and then a big drug bust happened in another county, and the criminal investigator had to do that. So Russ was put back on the back burner. He, um, well, he he would choke me out all the time um, to build up my neck or whatever. But that's a felon to choke people. It's a felon. Um, he he would bite me. He had he would bite hard on me. He left my back with bruises, and one of the contestants saw my bruises. They're like, "What happened?" I would have had pictures at the time, but. I was so terrified that he was going to just go out and just, like, there was a time where people thought, well, what happened to Holly? Did you bury her? There's only one other person that knows, and it's it's the neighbor. Her name is Debbie. Um, cause when the cops took me into the hospital after, I just stayed one night. They did a quick psychological evaluation at 3 in the morning because the criminal just, the criminal investigator wanted to talk to me. So they, they, um, they wanted to hurry up the process. They're like, okay, she's not insane. She's saying she'd be a good witness against him. Um, um, they, they didn't know what to do with me, so I stayed a week in the women's shelter in Lawrenceburg. So while Russ didn't know that I was actually still in Tennessee uh, a week later, just waiting it out, um, and Debbie's the one that, that drove me to the airport. So um, at that time, I was just trying to uh, get everything together to uh, uh, either get my life back on track and just go and just the last, oh, my God, I will send you the, okay, so when I left, that was a big blow to his fragile ego. I had a good-looking woman, and she's gone. What am I going to do? She was the only one that could save me from my pedophilia thoughts. I don't know. It's crazy. Um, Cause he would tell me it doesn't mean anything that I saw that, that I put my, I saw myself putting my hands on that little boy's butt, or it doesn't mean anything that I saw myself putting my face on that girl's crotch, you know, shit like that. I, and he's like, she was the only one that made it good and made it okay, but whatever. When I left um, and I <clears throat> started plumbing, started plumbing. Um, he, um, he made it to a point and he continued to do this up until like March. And I went to see him in trans world because I was like, fine, I'll come see you because he would, he would message me like him singing songs. It was to the point I'm like, okay, I'll go fine. We will, we'll just do it. We're going as friends and he, and then he's always, would well, he still love me? Do you still love me? And when you badger someone to the point where you just want them just to be quiet, then you... You were singing, and yeah. I said, I said, I love you. And it was just to 
to, because he was just going nuts. And he, and while I was at Transworld, like he was like holding my hand so tight. I was like, golly, you're hurting my hand. Cut up a little. But um, uh, that very next month, I think back in, um, in May, um, he was really missing me. And he was sending me like texts of how much he loves me and how much he wants me to be his little bodybuilder and how much he loves me and that I was the only one that understands him. And so he decided to buy plane tickets to go to Las Vegas. And I spent the good year just just really hating him and being angry. So I figured, okay, Russ, I'll meet you in Vegas. Let's go to Las Vegas. We'll go to Las Vegas. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to marry me and spent over ten thousand dollars. The very while he was uh it was the very day I was supposed to be at the airport, he called to see if I was at the airport and I told him, No, Russ, I'm not. I decided not to and he went ballistic. He screamed and screamed. And he, he said, I can't get that money back. How could you do this? And I guess I did it because I just wanted my soul to feel good because I just like, there, now how do you like it? Now that's um, he He did deprive me of food. I, I mean, I, would, I remember times I would beg. I'm like, I, can we please go into town and get food? I don't have a vehicle. And so I, I walked to uh, the town to get food, and I would carry a big backpack because he wouldn't get off his lazy ass to go get food. And there was a time where I would just eat ice in the freezer because there was no, there was dog food. There was plenty of dog food, but nothing for me and uh, to eat. And there was food um, and there was times where he wouldn't eat. It was weird. And so he would, that was a way to control. I'll control you. I'll just, I'll just starve you. There was times where he wouldn't eat. It was weird. And so he would, that was a way to control. I'll control you. I'll just, I'll just starve you. And then you have to beg for food. Oh, majorly. And that's what I told the cops. You need to always watch Russ because the reason I came back so many times to Tennessee was I was trying to protect the kids of the neighborhood. And a lot of people don't know that. I was trying to make sure that he didn't go out and, and get too close to the kids or watch the kids in, on yeah, his porch. porch and crazy crap like that. He'll deny it to this day, but the truth is I came back so many times to protect the children in that neighborhood from the real boogeyman. Yes, because he painted a picture of me that I was just this crazy person with challenges. That's not true because my mother gave, my mother, my own mother, she she would know her daughter that I'm not uh, schizophrenic. No, yes. none of that is real. And um, I, 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 I know the universe will bring the truth because when you hurt someone, it just comes back to you tenfold. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't last in prison because he told me his fears that he, he fears that uh, people would molest him and that they would touch him and he, that he would just want to grow insane. Um, he told me he was in a mental institution when he was 12 years old. He, uh, it's like he lived his life, uh, it's a lie. He and he had to believe this lie, or else he would want to kill himself. That he's a good person. And when I saw this good person in Russ, when I first met him, I was like, I was like, oh, this is a nice person. Oh, you're tortured by Carol. Oh, you poor baby. Let me help you. But you know what? And I had I had to go into my own self and realize, oh my God, I'm just trying to help him in order to help me out. Because I was hurt. So I'm like, no, this person is truly sick. It's time to go. The real McKamey manner, the real, the real horror is what that man did to people that he supposedly loved. And that was very twisted. I mean, it, it, I, it, was, it was like I was living a horror show for three years. Um, I was saying when the truth is out there, all sorts of opportunities open up. And I, I hope that that comes my way that I can... Uh, share people that, hey, this is this, this person's a bad guy and you need to know because I think everyone deserves the truth. Bye-bye.